Hi, Professor Wills here. So we're continuing to examine modern art in Germany in the late teens and 1920s. Uh, we've already um, met um, a couple of artists associated with German new objectivity. Let's meet another one in this mini video lecture. Um, his name is Georg or George Groß. And this is a, another artist, um, as many of them um, associated with new objectivity, who actually served in the German army during World War I. So actually bore witness to the horrors of war um, and came home uh, clearly disillusioned, but with their artistic skills were able to um, reflect on those years, but also call out um, those through kind of an artistic indictment who were responsible for the decline and suffering of German society. And that included in the years following the war, this period known as the Weimar Republic between the two world wars. Um, so George Groves is really good at using particularly the art of caricature, which we often see in popular culture to like a comic kind of typecast people and, and communicate different um, ideas and uh, you know satirical humor but in the work of George Gross we find that caricature is used um, to blend both sort of the darker side of life the macabre with political and social satire so let's take a look at a couple examples of his work um, one in illustration and then the second um, a painting All right, let me enlarge the image here. All right, the first step is an example of an illustration. It's called Fit for Active Service, The Faith Healers from 1916 to 1917. The materials are basic, pen, brush, and India ink on paper. Gross's work in caricature can be seen in this illustration, one of many, many he produced for various political publications at the time. This is before censorship really sets in um, in a few years with the rise of Adolf Hitler. What you see in the image is a group of military officers chatting, smoking stogies, wearing all their medals, a little overweight from their cushy lives, um, bearing witness to um, serving on a board, essentially, and bearing witness to various uh, soldiers who are being brought in and decision is being made whether to send them back out to the front lines after they have recovered from their injuries. Well, clearly, the skeleton standing at attention is been reduced to a cadaver-like status. His injury is so great. And yet you have a doctor leaning in with his stethoscope and proclaiming that he is okay, KV, uh, abbreviation of the term okay that we use um, in English, basically saying that he is fit for service and ready to return to the front lines and fight for the German army. At the time, what horrified George Gross was that um, Germany was losing the battle, was running out of able-bodied men, and so started to draft uh, old men and boys into the German army in desperation. So the fact that, you know, turning to um, the walking dead to ascend back out to the front lines is an example of the how pathetic uh, it really is while so many of those who get to enjoy the fruits and the profits of war, get to stay behind um, and enjoy the comforts of, of uh, their cushy lives. That is underscored by the view outside of the windows here. I know it's kind of hard to see um, in this video, but those are smokestacks and factories. That represents the industry of war, the factories that are producing the machines, the ammunitions that are wreaking havoc on uh, land and humans 
um, in one of the deadliest um, um, wars in world history, of course, World War II coming soon. Uh, so you can see, again, very through simple caricature, the powerful message that is being communicated that's extremely topical um, in these times in Germany. Let's pivot to the work of George Gross as a painter. This is his famous painting uh, called The Eclipse of the Sun from 1926. It also skewers corruption among those in power and the literal mindlessness and apathy of the German public to what's happening and who's in power. The title refers to the coin in the upper left hand corner, you can see the dollar symbol there, that is literally obstructing the shape of the sun itself, referring to the profiteering that is killing life um, and any kind of healthy radiance that, you know, the sun emits and, of course, bringing darkness to all. Around another meeting table, you see a group of men. The primary figure at the head of the table is an actual person. This is Paul von Hindenburg, the president of Germany. He's shown as a caricature, but he often wore his military uniform whenever he could, even though he wasn't officially in a military capacity, proudly showing his plethora of medals, his epaulets on his shoulders, his signature big mustache, and yet George Gross shows him kind of like a, an animal with pointed teeth, ruddy cheeks, and beady eyes. On top of that, he's also wearing a laurel crown. You can see the leaves of the laurel crown around his head. This is something that goes back in time to the Roman Empire, another kind of aggressive militaristic empire, um, as if Paul von Hindenburg viewed himself another emperor entitled to this kind of uh, expansionist aggression. Around the table, you might notice various men that make up part of the president's cabinet, seemingly taking notes at a meeting. Yet there's a bloody sword on the table and their heads are missing. That's the artist's way of communicating that these are the yes men. They have no minds of their own to contradict and challenge their leader as you would find in a democratic form of government. Um, and instead, of course, um, have been um, castrated, if you will, of their ability to protest any decision. Now, the man who does have influence is this guy, looking a little bit like the Monopoly guy with his top hat. Um, he and Monocle, he represents the man from industry who is whispering into the president's ear interested in manipulating government and people in power to enhance his own profits. And of course, his profits are derived from the weapons that he's carrying under his arm, indicating that he is part of the problem in Germany, the uh, interest in propagating war to make money. Uh, finally, down below here, you see um, a cage-like um, mesh with haunted eyes staring out of it, of course, representing the oppression and the restriction of rights of the people. And lastly, the donkey on the table, wearing blinders and eating the papers out of the trash bin. What's going on with that? Well, that represents the public. The donkey represents the public who swallow all the lies the government puts out there and the blinders represent the public not looking more closely, not applying themselves to really read into what's happening and who's pulling the strings in the German government. George Gross, recognizing that he would soon be in the crosshairs of the Nazis when they rose to power, fled to America like many European artists did, where he lived before returning to Berlin 
in the late 1950s. Thanks for joining me.